ones that we're going to use. There's, uh, I'll even write them down for you just to be nice. Stochastic. There's behavioral. There's a gate level. And there's switch level. Which ones are we going to use? Uh, behavioral. Decoding one and probably the gate if you're going. Yeah, that's right. These are the two we're going to use: behavioral and gate level. We're not. This is more for test benches. We're not going to do that much with test benches, and we're going to see system Verilog is better for it than basic Verilog. And we're not going to use the switch level. We're going to use use multi sim. It's more accurate. So yeah, we're going to use gate level and behavioral level. You got that one right. Richard gets a point. How about Eric? Are you here, Eric? No, Eric. Andrew? No, Andrew. Hi there. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, Sorry. I was just scrambling for the mute button. No problem. Okay, Andrew. Um, if you're going to do a design in Verilog, what are the basic steps that you have to follow? There's sort of a three basic steps. What are the basic steps? One, two, three. You're going to be doing this over and over again, do, uh, starting in lab four. What are the steps? Um, I'm not too sure. Okay. Michael. Are you here, Michael? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I, uh, I have three steps down, but I don't think that's, yeah, never mind. I don't think that's what you're referring to. I have something written in my notes, but I, I think it's for something else. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. Go pass. Zach. Hi Pastor. there. Zach. Three, this is worth three points. You have the last chance. What are the three steps when we're doing a Verilog design? Um, well, from my notes, I have that first a Thor simulation is done at a high level of abstraction. Yeah, simulate. And normally this will be at behavioral level, at high level. Yeah, step two. Then, uh, detailed design is done with the automatic synthesis tools. Yeah, then we synthesize the gate level. To get a gate level description, yeah. And then you do the gate level verification with uh, simulation, fault simulation, and timing verification. Yeah, and we simulate again. With the same test benches here, we simulate the gate level. And we want to make sure that these two things are equal, right? They should be equal. If they're not, we got a problem. And then we'll add a few other things, but that's the main thing. So we simulate at the high level, we synthesize, and then we simulate again to make sure everything's OK. Uh, so you got three points, Zach. Nice. Uh, next question is for uh, Tundi. You here? Yeah, I am here. Okay. Uh, Tundi, your question is, I have some Verilog code. It looks like this, lowercase n, a, n, d. And then it has the letters, my, man. And it has A, B, C, D. And then we have a semicolon at the end. So what will this create? What will this Verilog code create? What, what's the circuit we're going to get? So it should be a three input NAND gate uh, with one output of A. So B, C, D are the inputs. A is the output. And the my NAND is just the instance name. Yeah, that's the name of this, my NAND. Excellent. Wow, very thorough answer. Okay, you got a point. Um, next question is for uh, Maya. You hear Maya? Or Maya? Maya? No, Maya. How about Andy? No, oh, Andy. Victoria. Yes, I'm here. 
Oh, you sound very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here. Okay, Victoria. You have some code. It looks like this. Uh, NAND. It has a number sign. It has a one and a two, like that in brackets. And then it says Victoria. And it says A. B, C, D. And so what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this number sign one and two? Um, that means the T, D, low to high is uh, one and T, D, a T, time delay, high to low is two. Yeah. And what's one, one and two what? Um, it's a time delay. Yeah, but like what units is it? A picosecond. It's always picoseconds? Oh, uh, wait, uh, it's nanoseconds, I think. It's nanoseconds? No. You already have both, but this is like an extra question. This, is, this unit can be whatever we want. It's defined by the time scale command. So there's a time scale command. And it just says what these units are. They could be picoseconds, they could be nanoseconds, they could be femtoseconds. The time scale command will have two numbers, like uh, one femto over one femto, and it'll say what the units are here and what the resolution of the simulator is for this circuit. Okay? okay. Oh, yeah, you got it right. I see. Thank you. Ah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, now I got a bonus question for everybody. Everybody, let's see what their new bonus question will be. Mm. Okay. For this thing. And there's over here to bonus quizzes. Give you. Uh, I got about five more minutes left. And if you get this right, you understand four level logic completely. And it's tricky. So you can do it. Six? Sorry, uh, 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 I don't think we talked about the, the case where it's charging or the charging at the same time. Huh? Like, I don't think we talk about when it's charging or the charging at the same time. When it's charging or not charging at the same time, I don't understand. Uh, well, never mind. We, we did this version of this with the, I went through the whole thing with, the inverter going the other way. I did I did the not IF1. This is the not IF0. This is like the same as this one, except the inverter is flipped the other way. And we went through and I well, I didn't do the truth table, but I explained how it all worked.
got less than two minutes left. One minute left. Hopefully everybody submitted. Okay, let's go through this one. It's a little tricky. Uh, let's start with those inner ones. They're usually the easiest ones or top left corner ones. So let's start here, the first one. Control is zero. So if control is zero, the PMOS would be on. This would be one, the NMOS would be on. So this is a zero, this is a one. So these are both on. So these switches are closed. This looks just like an inverter, right? So when control is zero, the zero passes through, gets inverted. So this would go to a one. And the one would go to a zero. What about the X? What would happen with the X? What would happen when the input is X? It would go X, right? We want, we, if, if, the, if the A was a zero, it'd be a one. If it was a one, it'd be zero. So there's two possibilities and it's not tri-state. So it's X. What about Z? If A was Z and control is zero. Z. Everybody agree? X, George says X. X. Justin says X. A lot of X is coming up. The X's have it and the X's are right. Because the control is zero, these are enabled. It's not gonna be Z at the output. It's gonna be driven something. This is kind of, we don't know what this is, the zero or one. And we don't know what the output is, but it's not Z, it's X. It's uh, not professor, floating. Yep. I was under the impression that when the tri-state buffer is off, it, it it's not conducting. That's right. But in this situation, when control is zero, it's not off. Control is oh, zero. I see. The PMOS is on. It's like the two switches are closed here, so it's not turned off. See, this is okay. active low. When control is zero, it's passing the signal through. Okay, I see. Yep. So nobody got fooled. Well, just Surin, but everybody else got that right. What about when control is one? So now this is a one. This is a zero. So the PMOS is off, the NMOS is off, both switches are open, A is zero, what's gonna be the, the output? Everything is Z, Z, Z. Maxime, you're right, everything is Z, it's Z everywhere. Z all the way down, is that what you say? These will be, all be Z, doesn't matter what A is, when control is one, the output's gonna be Z no matter what. Even the X becomes a Z and the Z becomes a Z. Everybody okay with that? So those were the easy ones. Oh, I have a quick question. So sure. then whenever, so whenever control is one, all the outputs are gonna be Z? That's right, no matter what. I got, I got. thank you. Yeah, because control one disables it, the output goes Z and nothing drives it. How about this one? Control is X. What's going to happen? A is zero. Everything is X. Abdi says, uh, and Yosef says, everything is X. That's what I got. Every X. X is right because you see, there's two situations here with control. If control is a zero, and this is a one, then we get a Z here. But if control is a one and a zero, the A passes through, so the, the A would pass through and become a one, but we have two possibilities now. We have a one or a Z. And it's not just Z, it's more than one Z, so that becomes an X. So that's a tricky one. It was really tricky. Can we see that? Because in this situation, there's two possibilities a one or a Z, but it's not a Z, it's more than Z. Remember Z is a subset of X. Can we see those? In there, there were two possibilities. There was a one 
or a Z. And since there's more than a Z, it's an X. What if you wrote one over Z? No, we can only have one thing. The simulator can't simulate two things. It can only make a, a node one thing. So the same idea here, there's two possibilities everywhere here, right? There's three possibilities here, X and X. And there's three possibilities here, X, but they're all X. Last column, what about when this is Z and A is zero? X, X, still X. Yeah, these all stay X because we move when, when the control is Z, it can also be a zero or one, which means we can get a Z out here or a zero or a one, whatever. So it gets more than one possibility. So these all stay X's as well. So that's the truth table. Pretty tricky. Once you understand this, so you understand everything, you can figure out X's and Z's. Uh, professor. Yeah. For the situation where control is X and A is Z, um, wouldn't the two possibilities be Z or Z? No. Let's say control is X, okay? Let's just erase this over here. So that means this control could be a one or a zero. And this would be a zero or a one, right? So when it's a one, this is disconnected. This is a zero, this is disconnected. So the output is Z. So that's one possibility, right? Doesn't matter what A is. If, if I had this situation one and zero, I would get a Z no matter what. The other possibility is a zero and one. So now it's connected. So these two switches are closed. Z is connected. And A is going to pass through, right? And A is Z, which means we don't know. This could be a zero or one. So if it's a zero, we'll get a one. If it's a one, we'll get a zero. So there's three possibilities here, zero, one, or Z. And we don't call that Z, we call it X. Whenever there's more than one possibility, it's X. So A would not pass through as Z? No. Okay, thank you. It could, it could be a Z, but it could be a zero or a one as well. And when there was more than one possibility, it's X. Thank you. Yep. Anyway, that's a tricky one, but hopefully lots of people got it. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the next set of notes.